Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm bringing you a recent raccoon commission, uh, so stay tuned. As usual, I'm starting off with that black chrome acrylic acrylic paint, but you can use whatever acrylic paint you like. And I'm using this black paint to go around the eyeballs, nose and mouth in that black paint. Uh, I usually do two to three coats of this black paint just so I get the coverage and there's no resin showing through. I usually coat my resin pieces with a primer. It's just a matte white paint that has quite a good tooth on it. So uh, resin has a slippery surface. So um, you want that tooth for any paint that you apply to the resin. Now the customer requested a uh, white raccoon, so I drew inspiration on a, an albino raccoon. So it has um, brown uh, eye markings and brown markings on the tail, but it is a pure white uh, raccoon. But it doesn't have the pink eyes that a normal albino raccoon will have. This time I decided to give him some blue eyes. And here's what the black paint looks like so far. So I'll let this dry and come back to the eyes. So for the eyes, I'm using a Lumiere paint by Jacquard in pearlescent blue. Um, you can find this in specialty art stores, so I'm not too sure whereabouts you find it, but in Australia, I found them at Melbourne Artist Supplies in the city. And this paint has got quite good coverage, so I'll only need one coat of this blue paint. Uh, and as you can see, um, I'm being a little bit more careful than doing the black around the eyes, just so I don't go overboard with um, the paint over. So I won't have to cut in um, with the black too drastically. Just a little info on these resin pieces. So I sculpt these pieces uh, from monster clay and then I make a mold out of silicon and I cast it in resin. So this is the final resin piece and you can use the silicon mold quite a few times before it starts to disintegrate. So just a good tip and I know I get a lot of questions asking about that. So there you have it. And here's what the blue looks like. It's quite a vibrant blue. So I'll let this dry and come back to the eyeballs. So for the pupils, I use that same black chrome acrylic acrylic paint and I usually just cut in first before I start doing the pupil area because I want to use sort of a dry brush for this technique and that way it feathers out the edges of the eyeballs and it doesn't make it look so harsh and blends it in a bit more. So once I finish with the pupils, I usually like to put these two little white dots in the eyes so it just brings the character to life and it has a bit more shine in the eyes. And I use just that same chroma curl paint, but this time it's in white. And you can see how it brings out a bit of personality in the eyes. Right, moving on to the hands and I'm just painting that black chrome acrylic acrylic paint onto the palms of the raccoon. And the raccoon has like skin palms, so that's why there's no fur on it. So only the top will be furred. And I'm generally a bit messy with this part because uh, most of it will be covered in fur. So um, any see-through will be some shading under the fur. So that's a good tip for when you're furring your hands. Now I usually give a few coats of paint when it comes to the feet or hand area parts just so it gets a bit more coverage and it's a bit stronger. So this is the fur that I'm going to be using. It's a longer pile white fur. Ooh, and a little spider is in there. Come on. Get it. Come on. Oh, I hate my... There we go. Off you go. So anyway, this is the fur that I'm going to be using. And as you can see, I've already drawn out the patterns for the raccoon body. And my patterns usually consist of three parts and the tail part. Um, and it's two sides and the underbelly as well as the tail, which is just a tube, so nothing too um, complicated there. And I'm just cutting around the pattern with these smaller scissors. 
um, and I'm just cutting the backing and not the pile of the fur like I've said in my previous videos. Uh, I prefer to use smaller scissors because I find that it has better control over what I'm cutting rather than larger ones. I just find that larger one ends up cutting the actual pile and it just makes it a bit messy and not great. So once I've cut the parts out, I then pin the pieces together, fur side together, and then I prefer to sew it up on a sewing machine, just because I find it a bit more stronger than actually hand sewing most parts. So you will have to hand sew some bits, like the butt area, to close it up once you've turned it inside out and everything. So here's what it looks like when I've sewn all the bits together and you can see I have the uh, legs open and the back open so I can connect everything and turn it inside out. So I'm just sewing up the leg pieces once all the armature is in the actual body and the resin pieces are attached. Uh, I normally don't show this bit because it's something that I've developed um, and taken a lot of time to develop so um, I prefer to encourage you guys to develop something of your own and that way it's very unique to your piece. So I'm just using a ladder stitch to sew up the leg pieces and I use the ladder stitch to sew up all sides of the body. Um, it's like a blind stitch and it um, closes the uh, bits together seamlessly. So once it's all sewn up I then go in and attach the fur piece to the resin using a tacky fabric glue and you can use any tacky fabric glue um, it's usually clear and you can find it in any craft stores or anything uh, I don't know what's over in America but I know that Joann's or something might have it um, but this you can find at our Riot Art and Craft stores in Australia so um, it's a great glue and I really really like it so once I've trimmed everything, I then attach the fur to the face and feet. And it's another thing that I prefer not to show just because I've spent a lot of time developing it and it's very unique to my pieces, but definitely try your own way and I'm sure you'll come up with something that works for you. And here's what the final guy looks like. And that is it from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any requests, leave it in the comments down below and I'll see how I can get to it. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!